is carried. Right, DRF, number nine. I'm happy to move it. And uh, Councillor Harrison Hunt's happy to second it. Is there any questions? Councillor Henstock. Oh, thank you. Um, in relation to the funding history for Christchurch Foundation, I note that in the um, spreadsheet that we've given, you referenced the funding history for the Green Effect Trust for 17, 2017 and 2018, but there's no reference or mention of the six years of 600,000 uh, per year given to the Christchurch Foundation, which is 3.6 million over the last six years. Just wondering why you've admitted to put that in your documents. Rose Costham, Community Development yeah. Advisor. Yeah, <laughs> sure um, Yes, well, that's probably actually an admission, actually, Councillor Henstock. Um, it was probably a reflection on here's the current state of uh, where they are at the moment of, of uh, looking at uh, phase two of where they're wanting to take the organisation to be. Um, yeah, my second question, when we're looking at that spreadsheet and there's the description of what they want to do and they're talking about the rapid completion of the fundamental tasks, ensuring the maximum benefits, uh, uh, etc. So it's always been intended that the Christchurch Foundation was going to be financially sustainable and they've had six years to work towards establishing themselves in that way. So I'm really struggling to understand and reconcile why there is now this urgency with a rapid completion of these fundamental tasks when in fact they've had six years to do this. Is it too little too late? I'm just really keen to understand mm. why the rapidity now. Yes. So the initial model that was set up, it was uh, money in, money out, passing through. And what would usually happen in that situation is they'd, they'd almost take a fee for service. So they would take some of that money to um, set up a fund uh, to run the organisation. That didn't happen as effectively as it should. So what's happened over the years is there's money has come in, tagged to go out to various um, causes or projects or charities like the mosque shooting. And there wasn't and sufficient funds set aside to run the organisation. So what, what's happening now is in this in this different phase is they're wanting to set up a model where there will be fees for service, where there'll be much more focus on building endowment funds. The speed that we're, the speed is the that they're wanting to onboard new trustees to get a new um, strategy working and new models in time for the financial year. That's with the speed. Uh, Looking at also at the uh, description of what they're doing, funding will result in a more robust organisation, stronger alignment and working relationships with community organisations, and in particular the council. So surely that was one of the objectives of what they were also meant to be doing over the last six years. So are you now saying that actually they don't have a strong working relationship with community organisations and they're not aligned or have a strong working relationship with the Christchurch City Council? Well... I would say that over the past few years, um, they may not have had as strong an internal relationship with council staff in terms of projects. Um, th I think that um, this new phase will, will bring the deeper relationship, closer relationship to um, what community organisations are doing, how we can be involved in that. Um, I th yes, I think that that over the past few years may not have been as effective as, as it has been. And I think with the, we've got a new board, we've got um, new management, and I think that um, that is a, a quite a high priority, strengthen those relationships. So notwithstanding the 3.6 million that they've had in the six years to get this together, are you satisfied that this 20,000 is enough for this organisation to be financially sustainable going forward? Yes, I'm confident it is. It is being underwritten also by some other funding, so ours is more of a quite a small contribution. I think they're quite a lean and mean team. They have brought new board members on. Um, David Takao in particular has a very strong history in endowment funding and wealth, building wealth through endowment, as does the new chair, Anna K. Goddell. So I, I feel very confident that uh, 
that the, that the new model, the new financial model, uh, the new people they've got in governance and uh, also the new manager, the numbers, who's got um, quite a very, a very strong background in philanthropy and endowment, I feel very confident that this um, new, income, new, new stage for the foundation uh, will be much strong, in a stronger position and I think in terms of the opportunities uh, Christchurch City Council has to benefit from that with, with the demands on funding that we have, the ability to have a foundation which has a very strong model in endowment funding and collaboration and partnerships, I think coming out the other end, I, I'm very confident that we're going to see some good results so for the these, community. Have these guys got any reserves? Not many, not. Yes, I think. Councillor okay. Cotton might have more information, but not 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 <coughs> sufficient to carry on as they have been. Hence, and how yeah. and how many staff have they got now? They have got uh, the uh, previous CEOs is down to uh, about uh, two days working on projects. She's not. She's I gone. Think she's gone. Sorry, sorry, that's an update. Thank you. And there's a part time general manager that has been come in. What that staffing looks like down the track will be established in this transition model. Mm. So it just so. occurs to me that they're going to be going forward with less staff and yet you're expecting them to achieve better than they did previously when they had a full complement of staff? Long term they will, once they get a better financial model and start working on some... Thank you. OK, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Uh, OK, we've got a mover and seconder. Any debate, please? No. Oh, Karen? Are they being put separately? Uh, the recommendation is currently together. They can be separated out if that's the preference. Well, of just given Victoria's questions, I'm assuming it should be, yeah. Can they be, Mr Mayor, please? Separated? Can do, yeah. Yep. Okay. Is that what you were going to ask, mm -hmm. Councillor Henscott? Oh, I just debate. want to debate just really briefly. Yeah, all right. I can. I think it's pretty obvious where I'm sitting on this. Um, this is an organisation that's received $3.6 million from us over the last six years. Sorry? $3 million. Okay. Thank you for correcting me on that. Regardless, $3 million over six years is still a heck of a lot of money in anybody's books. Um, and you might be thinking that this is only 20 k and what does it matter? But it does matter. I think it matters... And you've got to query whether this is throwing good money after bad. They had uh, huge numbers of staff in the past to achieve a model that was going to be uh, financially sustainable, and they, and they haven't been able to achieve that. Um, and now we've got a situation where this appears to be time critical to achieve, the to achieve that transition when they've been working towards it for six years. Um, it does beg the question of what they've been doing. I'm really struggling to support this today. Thanks. I'd, like to, yeah, I'd like to um, move an amendment for the Green Effect Trust that we make back $25,000, which is the full amount that they requested. Yeah. Um, so the Green Effect um, Trust um, are better known for, uh, across the city and across Canterbury as actually Trees for Canterbury. Um, they do an enormous amount of work that would cost us um, a lot of money to replicate. Mm. They provide uh, a huge number of trees, shrubs and other plants um, for various planting activities across the city and the region. Uh, they organise planting events, all those kind of things. They're amazingly good value for the city. And I think that uh, actually doing the full amount of requested will enable them to do more of that work um, and actually save us money and get good environmental and community outcomes in the meantime. Thanks. Okay, so we've got, and you're going to second it, Aaron? Yeah, I have, and I'll just quickly speak to it on, you know, Victoria raised some really good points here around the three odd million dollars versus the 25 grand we're going to throw into getting a ton of bang for buck as far as it comes to planting trees. There is no other way to get a reforestation of our city and region without organisations like this doing essentially uh, the, the majority of the work. So um, that I fully support um, the points Sarah's raised and the amount change and the other one is questionable. Okay, Councillor Johansson. Uh, I too share the concerns that have been raised about the Christchurch Foundation, but I think 
the time to have that discussion is through their request in the LTP. Um, given that they have funding uh, that, or money in, in being held in trust, uh, they do have, I think, some work that they need to do and I don't want to uh, lose the opportunity for that money to be um, distributed. Uh, so I, I, I'm open to giving them a small lifeline in the short term, but I think to medium long term, I look forward to us having a really robust discussion as part of their LTP request as to um, how things have ended up so pear-shaped and how we can look at getting greater synergy going forward. I know in particular we also have the Rada Foundation in our city and at the time there were discussions about maybe just having some assessment of those two organisations being one. So I, I don't know what the right solution is. I do support the idea of having a philanthropic um, organisation that is trying to raise funding. We've seen many requests from our community for council to fund lots of things and just sometimes it feels like we're being asked to fund everything. There are other groups in the city that could also help achieve some of those funding challenges uh, and let's figure out the best way to do that. But it is uh, pretty disappointing to be in this um, situation with the Christchurch Foundation uh, and hopefully we can find a better way going forward. Cool. Councillor Cotter. Thank you. I'm speaking on the, um, the Green um, Trust here. So the, um, yeah, this, this trust doesn't make money it uh, gets its funding to plant trees from lotteries and rata and the city council and what they're applying for today is um, funding to help them with their administration there are also other groups who do a lot of tree plantings um, one group i'm thinking of actually is is in partnership to deliver a, a tui corridor that runs along from the out the west along the port hills to bring the tui in and also working, that same group is working with Environment Canterbury to deliver, deliver $100,000 worth of planting a year. Um, and that group is the Christchurch Foundation. Okay, all right. So, no more questions, but no more debate. Which one am I? The am, amendment. amendment. Or are we happy just to put, who, I did, I moved the original, didn't I? Uh, yes, yourself mm. and Councillor Harrison have. Are you happy to put it in the main in the main action? No, you wouldn't. <laughs> now this is one of my better ideas today. <laughs> so we'll put that up in the in the in the substantive. Um, thank you very much, Councillor Templeton, for letting me do that. Um, um, right, so I'll put this motion here we've got in front of us. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you, Carrie. Right. Now so what a was that? We would still need to vote that on number yeah, four separately. Uh, the foundation oh, was separated. Foundation. Oh, sorry. Yes. So we, yes. Okay. Number four is separated out. So I'll now put number four. All of those in favour of number four, which you see there in front of you, say aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Okay. That's carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll now move. What I'm going to try and do 